Downbridge. Downbridge. <coughs> Precious blood of Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to another um, Sunday devotion at UCC. Um, for the people that are watching online, um, hello as well. And shall we start with a prayer? Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day they've given us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. And Lord, we'd like to thank you for guiding us um, here today, Lord. Lord, we'd like to pray for giving guidance and wisdom to the reader for today, as he will be sharing your word. And Lord, we'd like to pray that we um, refrain from any distractions to today, Lord. And Lord, we'd like to ask for forgiveness for any sins that we committed, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So last, so we are still on the topic of On the Watch. And last week, um, we were learning about Watch Our Mouth from Brother John. And today, we'll be talking about watching our feet. And the text will be in Proverbs 4, chapter 20, 
No, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Is everyone there? That is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. I shall read. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. And today we're going to be learning this topic from none other than our president of the youth, Brother Jemuel Pinnock. Thank you, Liam, for the introduction. So, uh, as he said, we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Uh, we're continuing our series called On the Watch. Uh, this is the third week, and first we learned about Watch Your Eyes from Queer Ralph, and the second week was Watch Your Mouth, which was given to us by Tita John. So the third installment is called Watch Our Feet. So um, normally I'm actually presider for our devotion, but now I'm actually standing up here and doing it. So um, please forgive me if I'm nervous. And everyone watching from the Philippines, I am sorry about my accent. <laughs> so, um, so to start, shall we uh, pray? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for giving us the energy and the strength to be here. Uh, today, as I speak your word, Please help me speak only what is true and what is right in your sight, Lord. Help me to speak well and to be bold and to be courageous, Lord. Um, give everyone ear, give everyone here is to listen well, Lord. And thank you for everything. You just need to pray. Amen. So I'll just read verse 26 again. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. So when reading this passage, there are two main things that stick out to me. The first thing is the path, and the, yeah, the first thing is the path, and the second thing is give, give careful thought. In other translations, it's, it can say ponder. So to truly understand what it means when it says ponder or give careful thought to our paths, we need to understand what Proverbs is really about. So it's presumed to be written by Solomon, which is um, David's son. And repeated themes throughout the chapter and throughout the whole book are wisdom, obedience, and listening. So overall, Proverbs is a book of instruction and teaching that Christians can apply practically nowadays. If we go to chapter 1, it states the very purpose of the book. So it says here, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instructions in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding Proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So that's the purpose of the book. Um, again, the themes are obedience, wisdom, and instruction. So chapter four specifically, um, it talks about um, Solomon's role as an instructor. So in verse 1, it says, Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. And it says in verse 4, Solomon even talks about, sorry, um, I think I'm looking at the wrong verse. Sorry, no, verse 4. Verse 3 and 4. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. 
When he taught me, and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart, keep my commands and you will live. So even Solomon, he was taught by his father. And I think that's an important thing to note here. That I think, even though I'm not a father myself, um, fathers have an important role as instructors to lead their children and to encourage them spiritually. So as fathers, um, I can't speak from experience, but I am a child, so I kind of understand. So as fathers in the church, do you teach your children? Do you encourage your children to attain wisdom and carefully obey instruction? And do you share it? Do you share wisdom? And as children, do we listen and do we, well, do we listen intently and carefully and do we obey? Uh, speaking to the youth specifically. So, one of the key ideas or the main focus of the verse is the path that we walk. Again, it says ponder or give careful thought. So, from my understanding, the path that we take is the actions that we take and the way that we conduct ourselves as we live on earth. And with every path, there is a certain direction or approach that we can take. So we're actually given two examples of a path in the chapter. And you can see it in verse 14. It says, do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evildoers. Avoid it, do not travel on it, turn from it and go on your way. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are, robbed of, they are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So obviously here there are two, two main examples. It's the path of the righteous and... Uh, the way of the wicked or the way of the evil doers of evil doers so let's focus on this so first if we look at the path of the unrighteous obviously they commit evil and what stuck out to me is they are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble so they aim to destroy other people and kind of drag people down with them so in real life, um, I guess that this can be represented as someone asking you to do something with them that may seem dubious or suspicious, like going out to drinking every week or going clubbing. So in society nowadays, these may seem like activities that are normal or, yeah, since drinking on Friday is a weekly thing that is normal. It's seen as, seen as a normal thing. So it may seem like a, an innocent way to uh, bond with each other, but um, I think we should recognize that it isn't, and that there are many ways to fellowship without sinning. So Solomon warns his, um, warns his sons of this path, and he warns them of it and tells them not to indulge in it or travel along it as well. Verse 15 says, avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. So does this mean that we should not associate with those who are doing evil or should we not interact with them at all? I think the answer, oh, the answer is no, since even Jesus ate with sinners he came not for the righteous, but for sinners. So as believers who might have non-believing friends, I think we should be a light to them. We shouldn't try to close ourselves off from them, but grasp at the opportunity to um, share the word to them, even though it might seem scary, even though it might seem like they would shun you or even start to dislike you. So Mark 2.17, 
On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So let's not close ourselves off to our non-Christian friends, but instead be a light to them. So another characteristic of the evil path, or the path of the unrighteous is, can be seen in verse 19. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So my way of interpreting it is the evil, those who are on an evil path, they don't recognize what makes them stumble or they don't know what they're doing is wrong. Um, they don't have a light that will show them, um, that will show them the, the way that is true and right. So in contrast, verse 18 says, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. So the path of the righteous, it's bright, it's illuminated, they can see where they're going. Um, unlike the path of darkness where it's like trying to go down the stairs without a torch or a flashlight, they're gonna stumble eventually. So how do we stick to this path of the righteous. So heading back to verse 26, I think Solomon gives an instruction that is very important and I think it can be considered as a first step, really. Give careful thought. So what does it mean by careful thought or ponder? So ponder means carefully and intentionally thinking about something deliberately. And they hold it to something that's of high importance or significance. To get onto the right path, we need to recognize which path we're on currently. Um, we can't really get on the right path if we, if we, think, if we think that we're on the wrong one. I mean, so if, if, we think we, if we think we're on the right one, but we're actually on the wrong one. So, it requires deep introspect, introspection and thinking. So do we commit evil? Do we indulge in our temptations? Um, do we allow others to drag us, drag us down with them? We need to assess our actions and our hearts. Do we think before we act or do we sin and only realize afterwards? So after realizing what path we're taking, we need to get back on track. So we can have a light for our path so we can know what steps to take. And it's actually mentioned by David, who was Solomon's, Solomon's father. In Psalm 119, verse 100, sorry, chapter 119, verse 105, um, a verse I think everyone is familiar with. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So the word allows us to see the path we need to take. It gives us the law so we can check ourselves. It contains prophecies of God's will in the near or far future can, regarding the end times. And it contains words of encouragement and words of warning as well. So there's a lot of wisdom that can be sort of extracted from the Bible, but how can we get to know it? Or how can we attain this wisdom if we don't, um, if we don't read it, if we don't know it? So um, the role of well, the function of the scripture can be uh, can be seen in Second Timothy, chapter three, verses sixteen to seventeen. So all scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So this may be like checking oneself, evangelism, and and yeah. So a good example of people who use the um, who use the word consistently are the berry and juice. So even though they were taught by Paul, who was um, an apostle. Um, they even checked. They even wanted to see if what he, they said, what he said was true. 
because um, today there are many false teachers who can speak eloquently, who can speak well, who can use big words, but the content of their message is false. Uh, I think um, yesterday in discipleship, we had an activity where um, we kind of had to use our discerning. So parents also have a key role in guiding their children, as I mentioned earlier. Solomon mentioned his role in teaching his children and leading them along a righteous path in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 11, if we go back there. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and, you, and lead you along straight paths. So, again, as a parent, do you can encourage your children to take their spiritual life seriously? Do you remind your children to do their devotion daily or even pray before they eat? Um, thankfully, I have parents who um, always encourage me to do my devotion. They, uh, they always ask, Jim, have you done your devotion? And I say, oh, not yet. So... Uh, yeah. So parents are very important to a child's development, um, even not in a in a Christian sense, but also like psychologically, socially. Uh, parents are important for a child's development in the way they act or think. Um, we can see this in the Bible in Proverbs twenty-two verse six. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. So if you teach your children ways that are right, ways that are pleasing, they will stick with it. However, as children, we also need to play our part. We also need to obey, since even though the parent might be very encouraging or very strict, if the children don't even bother to listen, then there's no point. So, oh yeah, it's one of the Ten Commandments as well. Honor your father and mother, and your mother. So what can drag us from a righteous path? Um, I think the overarching thing is sinful thoughts, since sinful actions sprout from them. So this is actually similar to a topic that we'll cover um, in the future, so I'll try not to dwell on it too much. So as I said, thoughts lead to actions. So if I see a, a woman that's attractive, I might say, oh, she's really beautiful, and that might lead to lust. However, this is not the case sometimes. So in another case, I might have an argument or a conflict with a friend, which might cause feelings of bitterness or malice if I have an argument with Kobe or Liam and say, oh, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, then instead of like criticizing them constructively, then I might have feelings of hate or feelings of malice as well. So Matthew 5, 22 and 27 speak on like the gravity or the importance of thoughts. Uh, I'll just read it. But if I tell you that, but I tell you that anyone, <coughs> I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. And verse 27 talks about lust. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So even thoughts can be sinful in certain cases. So Paul tells us to get rid of these thoughts in Ephesians 4.31, and we are to replace them with godly thoughts, which is said in Colossians verse, chapter 3, verse 2, if you want to read them in your own time. However, that's a devotion for another week. And another thing that can lead us, lead us astray is false teaching. As mentioned earlier, and um, in, the, in the main service, um, we're also taught to be aware because of false teachers and, yeah, false teaching. 
So we should be wary and we should be knowledgeable when it comes to the Bible so that we can check what people are saying. So staying away from the path of the evil deer, doer is a significant part of our lives as Christians. As Christians, we should exhibit the fruits of the Holy Spirit and stay in a path that is straight and not deviating. However, however that is not always possible. We will stumble eventually. We're not perfect. So when we do stumble, we should ask for forgiveness from God and repent. So a path that is righteous is not only beneficial to us and pleasing to God, but it can be inspiring or encouraging towards others who are growing in their faith. My challenge them to also take a righteous path. So in conclusion, let us be wary of the path we're currently on and let us pray for godly wisdom and the obedience that God desires so we don't deviate from the path he has willed for us. Hopefully we continue to grow in our relationship with him. And with that, let's end with a prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for giving me this privilege to share your word, Lord. Hopefully what I have said is pleasing to you, Lord. Hopefully the people who have listened today will recognize their path is important and the actions they take hold significance. Help us to stay on a path that is straight and does not have any deviation. Help us to be obedient. Help us to instruct, help future parents or parents now to be good leaders and good examples. And with today's Sunday service, Lord, may help everyone who's involved. And may you bless it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, thank you, Jem, for sharing the word today. And shall we not um, walk on the path of the wicked, but on the path of God? And shall we close devotion with a prayer? Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you've given us. Lord, we'd like to thank you for um, giving the guidance and wisdom for um, Jem today, as he shared, um, w watching our feet, Lord. And Lord, we'd like to... Um, Pray throughout um, this past month's devotions, Lord, that, we, that we've learned on how to watch our eyes, watch our mouth, and watch our feet as well, Lord. And Lord, we'd like to um, pray that we put these in our um, daily lives as well, Lord. And Lord, we'd also like to pray for um, the others who, who are still on the way, Lord, and give them safety and protection as they make it here safe. And Lord, again, we'd like to pray for any sins that we've committed, Lord, as we ask for forgiveness. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, please stand by um, until 10.30 for our Sunday service. Good morning, everyone.
Why do we worship? 1 Chronicles 16.23 Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of His praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him, all the earth. So why do we worship? We worship to place adoration on who God is in our lives. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is the reason that we worship.
Okay. Awake, awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust, rise up, Sit and throne, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck. Daughter Zion, now a captive. For this is what the Lord says. You are sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. At first, my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately, Assyria has oppressed them. And now what do I have here? declares the Lord, for my people have been taken away for nothing, and those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day long, my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen, lift up their voices, together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes, burst into songs of joy together. You ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure, you who carry the articles of the Lord's house but you will not leave in haste or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. Shall we all pray? Jesus, O heavenly Father, creation of heaven and earth, thank you for everything they have done for us today. Cleanse us and open our hearts and minds for your message for us today, O Lord. And bless our speaker and use him wisely as an instrument of spreading the good news. Bless everyone here that you, could, that you called to serve you and listen to your word. May you be praised above all with our songs that we will be singing and actions that we will be doing. <coughs> Use us, Lord, for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please remain standing for the praise and worship. Amen, just like what the text uh, says, let us burst into songs of joy together as we offer and exalt the name of our um, Redeemer, our God. And let us behold his beauty and his splendor and proclaim that he's our king and he will reign forever. Let us sing.
on his hands Bearing all the guilt of sinful man God eternal, humble to the grave Jesus, Savior, reason now to wait Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Recognize, Lord God, our greatest need, our greatest desperation, Lord God. And that is uh, our salvation, Lord God. Not the riches of this world, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to come to you and submit to you, Lord God. We praise you and we glorify you, Lord. is calling Have you come to the end of yourself Do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar the fire Arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh God 
precious blood, Lord, we are saved, Lord, and we are forever grateful, Lord God. I praise you, and we offer these songs, Lord God, these praises to you and to you alone, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Let's give a clap of praise uh, to our God, and we're so glad uh, to see every one of you in here. Welcome. Um, for those who are back, welcome uh, here, and for those who are following, uh, following us online, thank you for joining us as we um, exalt the name of our Lord. It's quite chilly this morning, but it shouldn't stop us to give, us, give our warmest smiles and hugs or so shake each other's hands as we welcome one another. And I would like to uh, invite everyone to continuously uh, join us as we sing songs of praise our God. Let us sing.
beyond the clouds Kings and kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb so open up the gate Make way before the King of Kings The God who comes to save Is here to set the captives free For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is a Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before The Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before The Lion and the Lamb before our God, our one true God. And he deserves the glory and honor and majesty. Please we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now take your seats. Amen. And indeed, our, our Lord is the Lion and the Lamb. And happy Lord's Day, everyone. And not only here, but to those watching our live stream, happy Lord's Day to you too. And um, I hope that everyone here is having a blessed day. And um, firstly, 
um, I would like to acknowledge the visitor that we have with us today. And, um, and when um, I call upon your name, can you please rise up so that we know who you are? And um, can I please call upon Glenn Neil D. Tobias? Um, welcome to UCC, and I hope this will be your only time here. And um, uh, I also see that the kids are already lining up, excited for their Sunday school. Um, so before anything, can we please raise our hands as we pray for the kids? Um, Jesus, oh Heavenly Father, thank you for everything they've done for us today. Thank you for providing us with these kids, oh Lord, for, um, and continue to bless them, oh Lord, throughout this day, oh Lord, and provide them with the wisdom and strength that will, they will need today, oh Lord, during their Sunday school, oh Lord. And also please bless the Sunday school teachers, oh Lord, as that they will be the ones who will um, spread God's word um, into their hearts, oh Lord, so that hopefully these kids will um, spread the word through their school friends uh, or their friends in general, oh Lord. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, for, so for those of you who are new here, uh, or those who are um, or those of you who are new to watching the live stream, let me explain um, who we are. We are an we are an assemble assembly of Bible believing Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. We are united in seeking the truth that is in the Holy Scriptures spreading the love of God to the people and sharing our faith, the gospel, our great commission. So I'm sure that a lot of you are wondering why I am here presiding today. <laughs> well, um, today is Youth Sunday, so that is why most of the people here are from the youth. So if you couldn't tell already, I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, and I'm sure the other youth were also nervous. Um, but anyways, um, may we all now please get our Bibles ready. And for those of you who don't have a Bible, our ushers will make sure to um, hand you a Bible as we now um, get ready for our scripture reading, which will be held in Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 27. And it will be spoken by Brother Tom and... Um, and our speaker today will be none other than Koya Mark. Yeah, if we all rise <laughs> for the reading of God's word. So that's um, the scripture reading for today is uh, taken from the Gospel of Mark, and it's uh, chapter 13, verses 24 to 27. That's Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 27. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars of heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of heaven, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven. Praise be to God for the reading of his word. You may all be seated. Um, I, can, I can hear that the mic is working, so that's good. <clears throat> um, hello, everyone. Um, um, before we start, we'll just um, quickly pray um, for wisdom and, and guidance. Um, um, Father, we just ask, and first and, for, uh, first and foremost, thank you for the day that you've given us, for allowing us to come here safely, 
for waking us up and giving us another day, um, a truly blessed day, Lord God, um, to praise you and give honor back to you, Lord God. May you guide um, our study today <clears throat> and the word. Um, may you um, use it, Lord God, to instruct us and encourage us of the hope um, even in the end times as well, Lord God, the hope that is coming, the hope that we have in you, Lord God. Um, Father, we ask for all these things, for the guidance and help in studying the word through the Holy Spirit. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> um, this is my debut, I think. <laughs> debut. <laughs> and it's a very difficult um, debut topic. The second coming is not the easiest um, topic to fall under, but it was... Um, definitely a blessing to study it. I've always wanted to study the um, the second coming, the end times, and I got it. <laughs> so praise God. Um, but as we start, I guess, this is a question for everyone. Does anyone here like, I guess, watching like zombie kind of films, you know, zombie related films or shows, that kind of thing, like The Walking Dead or like uh, Dawn of the Dead, if you're, if you're old, maybe uh, Night of the Living Dead, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, that's kind of thing. But I like them. Uh, I, re I really enjoy them. I used to watch them a lot. Um, as they present the characters really well, they're faced with these, like, morality kind of questions. But also it shows how prepared those characters are. Some characters are more prepared than others. Some are um, not, and they end up <laughs> dying, I guess. Um, but um, an example of this could be, like... Um, I guess this film, uh, I love this film, Zombieland. Um, it's like a, co a comedic take on, on the zombies. And, it's, um, and the main character, Columbus, he has this set of rules to survive Zombieland. And his first rule, the number one rule, is cardio. So you have to be able to outrun the zombies. So I'm sure, I mean, for me, I'd probably die in that world. <laughs> and rule number one is gone. But um, I guess the main thing is that those who are prepared are equipped physically and are mentally adjusted, whereas those who are not usually are the ones um, who are most affected, the ones who are the most trusting people, the ones who are easily deceived and taken advantage of. Um, the person that is um, most shaken at the time of great change are the ones who are not prepared for what is coming. And this is no different to our topic today, the coming, second coming of um, the Lord. <clears throat> Um, in, this, in this chapter, uh, we see that Jesus was warning his disciples of the signs and events that will take place. And the question is, why does the Lord tell them these things? It's for them to know that the false, false teachers are coming, false Christ, um, given, to, you know, given to us by Kyuchiro as well. He mentioned these. Um, that may try to lead them away. And, and also to be on guard for these things. To be, but be on guard, I have told you these things. That's what it says in um, that chapter. Um, Jesus gave his word to his disciples so that they may have something to hold on to when the time of confusion and deception come. And this is the exact same way we should um, use these words of Jesus. <clears throat> Not looking specifically for the signs, but being reminded that people will come to lead us astray from our faith. And it's a call for us to be discerning. Like uh, Jem mentioned, we had this thing in Eric's house the other day, and he was testing us, um, testing our discernment. And um, apparently, I think we failed. But um, it's, it's to understand that there are going to be people who are leading you astray from the doctrine and the truth of Christ. Um, if you go quickly to Romans, chapter 16, verse 17 to 20. Um, this is also quite evident. <clears throat> um, Romans 16, 17 to 20. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve the Lord our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be as wise to what is good and innocent and as to what is evil. 
The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And <clears throat> yeah, so as it says there, and it's, it's, it's nice to also see that it says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, which is not in our topic, but after, I guess, the topic is what comes. But, um, and the first thing to acknowledge is there are two other accounts um, in the Gospels. There's one in Luke 21 and Matthew <clears throat> 24 of the, this very same event, um, Jesus warning his disciples. Um, um, in Luke... Um, the significant parts that are missing are, um, um, if we just go there quickly as well, <clears throat> um, Matthew, uh, Luke 21, 25 to 28. <clears throat> 25 to 28. So it says, And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress of nation in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, People fainting with fear, with foreboding of what is coming onto the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So what, what differs here from the other accounts is, one, this idea that people are going to be fainting with fear that this is, is a time of confusion, that it will cause confusion to man, and as well as the encouragement also in this, in this gospel, um, that when these things begin to take place, straighten up so there's an action, and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So the Gospel of Luke presents the tribulation's effects on people in detail, showcasing how difficult these times will be, and it will be a time of great fear, not just normal fear, not like fear of spiders. It's a great fear that um, I believe we will have never experienced in our life before, which highlights all the more the hope for those who will be saved during the tribulation as well. And then Matthew's account is similar to um, Mark's. It's just in more, I guess, detail. Um, we'll quickly read that, and then we'll get on to our... Uh, topic. So Matthew 24, this is found in Matthew 24, verse 29 to 31. 29 to 31. Um, immediately after the tribulations of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give out its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in the heaven, in heaven, the sign of the son of man. And then all the tribes of earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds. So these, I guess, three events, three things that are um, evident here is the darkening of the sun and the moon and the stars falling, the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and gr great glory, and the gathering of the elect from the four winds, the four corners of um, the world, which is how we're going to split our study, kind of. So starting off with the astronomical events and signs. This is the darkening in the moon and the stars. We also find this in Revelations chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. This is the more detailed um, account of this um, coming. It's it's a, um, a part of the seven seals. It's the sixth um, seal of judgment um, that only the Lamb can open. Only the Lamb can open these judgments and unleash this upon man. Um, and the sixth seal. So we read 12 to 14. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree shed its winter fruit when shaken by a gale, a strong wind. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. So this idea 
obviously this idea of <clears throat> the darkening of the sun and moon is not um, not only is it found in the middle of the Bible and at the end, it's also found even before as well in the in the previous prophets. It's been mentioned there as well. In Joel, it's been mentioned in the book of Joel chapter 2. It's been prophesied as well. But there are two, I guess, events that we have not kind of um, seen. And these events are specifically uh, that, that we have not um, heard that is it's kind of new, necessarily. A one event that is new. It's a great earthquake. We have not. We didn't hear this in the Mark um, passage. We did uh, the great earthquake coming. There's a great earthquake that comes um, as well as the sun becoming black and the and the moon becoming like blood. And this great earthquake is. So we keep moving passages, but this great earthquake is in Revelation 16. Um, you don't need to um, turn to that, but it's a great earthquake that will cause the, 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 the great city of Jerusalem to be split into three parts. And if we, and it's, it's mentioned that this earthquake is, is an earthquake such as had never been on the earth. This earthquake comes, you know, in a, in a way that we have never seen before, um, and um, just to let you know, the, the the greatest magnitude of earthquake that we've had before is 9.5, and it caused a great tsunami. This was in Chile, in 1960. A great tsunami that um, totaled a, a number between 1,000 to 6,000 deaths between that time. And we will never see, you know, this when this earthquake comes. That's the greatest earthquake that has ever been. Imagine the casualties, but nevertheless. But I guess um, these signs in the heavens, um, you can, they are, I believe they are literal. They are literal heaven, uh, signs in the heavens. They're not necessarily symbolic. Um, as many signs have been said before. And, um, and, um, Aside from these signs, again, like in similar to Luke, we are kind of focused on the, um, um, the, the part of the passage as well, the, the latter half of this seal, which mentions how people will react to these signs, how people will react to these signs. And the signs um, that is mentioned is verse 15 and 17 um, of this um, verse, and we'll read that quickly. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? So we're painted this picture of these people cowering in caves and among the rocks, calling to the mountains rather than calling to the Lord and his coming. He's call, they're calling to the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne. They have acknowledged already that God ex exists at this time. They have acknowledged that his wrath is coming Yet they call upon the rocks. They call upon creation rather than the creator. Um, and rather they hide like Adam and Eve in shame and fear. Um, and as the church, how can we, I guess, respond to these signs? You know, when we, if we see, you know, suddenly the, the, it gets all dark all of a sudden. Is that the, is that the sign? Um, how do we respond to these things? Um, I believe in, in Act, Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, um, we can find our answer. Um, in the book of Acts. Um, this was at the time just before Jesus ascends to, um, to be with the Father and leaves his disciples. Um, this is their last conversation um, before that. Um, it says, verse 6 to 8, Acts chapter 1, 
verse um, 6 to 8. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you, be, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And what did Jesus say? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but, so instead, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come, has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The disciples question if this is the time of Jesus' coming. We may do that in the time um, when we see these signs. But again, what they are been, being pointed to is to continue witnessing. They're being pointed to, um, you know, you can ask, Lord, is this you? Is this, is, is this sign you? Yet what the Lord Jesus Christ points them to is that you will be my witnesses. Even in these times, we should be witnessing. We should be doing the Great Commission. The signs are not for us um, necessarily to know when he is coming. It's for us to be encouraged to do the commission even at the time of the tribulation and the coming. <clears throat> and um, in the coming of the Son of Man, um, in the next um, verse of Mark chapter um, 24 and 25, it's in verse 26. And it says, And they will see the Son of Man um, coming in the clouds with great power and um, glory. And this parallels the first coming of Christ as a, as a baby born in a manger, uh, humble, lowly. Um, in his triumphant entry in Jerusalem, he sat on a colt or a donkey. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, we don't have to turn. Um, for even, it says, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. It was a humble coming, his first coming, the ruler who serves. But now we are being reminded that, the, that Christ will also come to judge and reign on earth as the servant who rules. There you go. <clears throat> the second coming is in the sky and in the clouds with great power and great glory. Um, his coming is also being symbolized on a white horse um, in Revelations. But we'll get to that later on. But Jesus will come back as a triumphant warrior king, as a king who will assert his um, dominance, who will bring his kingdom to earth. Um, some, come, some kings come in a chariot, but the Lord comes in a cloud in the, in the same manner as he left. In Acts chapter 1, if you're still there, um, the verse 9, it says, And when he has said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. Um, Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives, and it's believed that that's, that's where he will return, <clears throat> but I'm unsure. Um, and they will, and, but, but we know that he will come the same way he left. In verse 11 it says, and, uh, and we read 10 as well. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This, is, this Jesus who was taking, taken up from you into heaven will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So he'll return this, the same way in the sky with a cloud and seen by his disciples. The cloud also has some significance. It may have symbolic meaning. Um, the cloud has been used to symbolize God's glory and presence in the Old Testament and even in the New. Um, we read this in Matthew 17, the transfiguration, um, verse 1 to 7. I'll just, I'll read for you. And after, this, after six days, Jesus took, him to be, took, uh, took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led him up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. <clears throat> and behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. 
And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it, it is good that we are here. If you, if you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And this is the verse. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And who is this cloud? A voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So we've heard this before at the baptism of Jesus. And this is God, his presence, um, his glory being shown. Um, in Exodus 13, um, we are also shown um, that the Lord is leading the Israelites um, as a great pillar of cloud. Um, so they knew this to be the Lord. They, know, they knew this to be um, the Lord, this glory, this, this cloud who's leading them. They knew them. They knew who it was. Um, another verse for <laughs> the cloud. Um, Daniel 7, 13 to 14. And it says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. Behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, peoples, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away. In his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. So though symbolic, the Lord Jesus could, in a literal sense, also come in a cloud of glory that is visible, similar to the pillar of cloud, showing that he is clearly coming as God. He's clearly coming as God. His, the God's presence is there, and his glory, his great glory, is also there. Um, so for us, I guess to think about, um, we should come to Christ before he comes to judge the world. It's a, it's, a fear, it, it, it's a fear, you know, studying this, knowing that the Lord Christ will come to judge and to bring judgment upon the world and how he will do it. And yet we are being lukewarm or, or not, even, not even um, warm, maybe cold, I don't know. But anyway, in our faith. Um, but accept him as your Lord and your Savior. And be assured of your salvation. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, I'll read it. Um, this I already mentioned in prayer meeting before. So if you were there, <clears throat> this is familiar. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the, and the clouds return after rain. So turn to God in the days of your youth. It's not necessarily, you know, if you're past your youth, it's not, that's not what it's saying, go back. It's to say, go as early as possible. In the time where you are still young, come to the Lord. Before the evil days come, which are the days Jesus is warning his disciples about. In Revelation 19, this is the description of the coming of Christ, a rider in a white um, horse, which um, we'll go through. Um, verse 11 to 16. Um, Revelation 19, verse 11 to 16. And it says, Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The white horse symbolizes purity, victory, nobility. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. Faithful and true to his word. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. He has the authority to judge. Um, he has the authority to judge. This is in, we read this in John 5, 21 to 24. And his eyes are like flame, like a flame of fire. No one can hide from his eyes, from the eyes of the Lord. And on his head are many diadems, many crowns. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. So we shouldn't try to guess. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. So we know this to be Christ. We know this to be Jesus. 
And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, we'll get to that, white and pure, we are following him on white, we're following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down nations. If we go to Isaiah 11, chapter 4, this is also, um, yeah, you're being tested <laughs> and then finding the, these verses, I'm sorry. Um, verse 4, it says, But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty, Jesus will be the one carrying out judgment on behalf of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, so this is where that verse is found. We see this always in the lyrics. So this is where King of Kings and Lord of Lords is found. It's also mentioned in Revelation 17, in which... Um, um, if we turn there, um, um, the, the prostitute and the beast, they are um, kind of gathering people together, I believe. Um, and it says that they will make war, on verse 14, and they will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them. For he is the Lord of lords, he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called chosen and Faithful. So it's a different picture of Jesus that we're used to hearing about. It's not, it's not the humble Jesus, the one who, who forgives, the one who heals necessarily. It's an image of conquest, similar to what we've seen with David in the Old Testament. And the armies of heaven um, will be with him, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure. And I believe this is the elect, this is us. If you have died, this will be us coming back with Christ. Um, this is evident in Revelation 19, same um, chapter, but at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It says, from verse 6 to 8, we'll read. Then I heard what seemed to be the, the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of many pearls of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the bride, and his bride, this is the church, has made herself ready. It was granted to her, it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deed of the saints. And the armies of heaven come with, arrayed in, fine linen, white and pure. So this is, I believe, the elect coming back with Christ. And there is hope for us, for those who um, are in Christ. Um, there's an end to sin that's coming. And we're one step closer to the new creation coming. Justice will come to the wicked. And... Um, and Jesus will be the one treading on the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God. With a word, Jesus can slay the wicked, strike down nations at the command of his word. Creation itself obeys at the command of his word. For all things were created through him and for him. This is the Son of Man coming with great power and great glory. And as the King of kings and Lord of lords, to those who have been martyred for the sake of the gospel, the Lord will avenge. To the enemy himself, he will send to the lake of fire. Brethren, we do not want to be on the wrong side of history, though this is future history, still history. It's written in the word. It will happen. We don't want to be on the wrong side of that. The result has already been written. Christ has already won. The question is, will you be there to witness his victory? 
Will you be there to witness his victory? Will we be there? Or will we be the one receiving um, judgment in the latter days? Lastly, um, in verse, uh, I guess the, the gathering of the elect now, the verse 27 um, of Mark chapter 13 is the gathering of the elect. We'll just read that again. And then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. So the gathering of the elect happens after the coming of Jesus. I believe this is the, the elect that have survived the tribulation, the, the saints who have responded to the gospel of Christ. They are being gathered um, back to Jesus. The angels are gathering him to Jesus from all over the world, from the four winds. And ultimately, the elect, or those who are with Christ, they will be with him. Those who have passed and those who are still, are still alive in these days. You know, we, we, we will not need to worry about where Jesus is, his whereabouts, or how to get there at this time. His angels will come to gather us. And time and time again, Jesus himself reaches out to us first, just as he had always done, even at the time of great tribulation. And as a shepherd does, he gathers his sheep. Um, and the, the main thing to think about here is that we will be with Christ in the end. We will be with him in the end. So let, let us not lose hope. Um, our hope is in Christ, that is evident. The one called faithful and true, he is true, and he's faithful to his word. What he said will happen, what he said will be done. When he said he will avenge those who have been martyred for his name's sake, he will avenge them. Vengeance is his. And he, in this word, it should bring joy to us. We should be joyful at this word, though it is scary, though it is um, difficult to hear. For us, there is hope. And I think for us, we should be all the more encouraged to share that hope with others. It's not for us to keep, you know, as if, yeah, you're the wicked and we're the righteous. That is not the way, you know, we're meant to view these things. These things should spur us to spread the gospel. To, to let others know of the hope we have in Christ. So, um, I have 13 minutes, but I'll conclude um, quickly, um, I guess. Um, so do not wait for the perfect time to come to Christ. It is not coming. The perfect time is already here. It's now. It's at the days of your youth. Um, regarding the coming of Christ and eschatology, the study of end times, we should be aware of it but it's not for us to be overly watchful. It's not for us to, um, you know, wait for the sun to go dark or the Antichrist to come. Um, it's not for us to do those things. It's for us to be prepared, um, awake and sober, as it says in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll just read that quickly. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter Five. Um, verse 1 to 11. Oh, not, not so quickly. It's quite a long verse. <clears throat> now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. There is no escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so let us, let us not sleep. Um, not, not literally. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake, be and be sober, minded. <clears throat> and, um, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. 
But that's when the thief comes. Um, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the uh, for helmet helmet of hope, of the hope of salvation. Um, For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, this is grace, by the way, whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another to build one another up, just as you are doing. I truly believe that the, um, the goal for us is to be so prepared that when these signs come, we're not going to change what we're doing. We're doing what, is, what we're supposed to be doing already. Um, when these signs come, it's not for us to finally sit up and do something. It's for us to continue doing what we've been doing, encouraging one another, building the church up, um, warning each other of these things, and spreading the gospel of Christ so that people may um, know. So let us continue the commission and be faithful in our walk with Christ. Abstain from sin and keep ourselves pure, for the Lord and his judgment is coming, and no one can escape it. So um, to, let us close in prayer. Um, Father, we just thank you for the day you've given us, for this word that you've given us, for um, allowing us to even get a glimpse of what is to come. Um, for warning us and giving us these signs not to overly worry about these things, but to be assured, Lord God, that um, you will have victory overall. Um, There will be a day that will come that we've all waited for, the hope of your return. Uh, May we be continually hopeful in your word, um, hopeful in your coming, and may we live as if you are coming tomorrow. Um, there are many things, Lord God, that we are prepared for. May this be one of them as well, Lord God. Um, This, um, not only uh, for us to be prepared, but get others prepared for your coming um, to continue doing what we should be doing, which is the commission, being witnesses of your truth, being witnesses of your gospel, and um, leading others to you. Father, we... Um, ask for um, guidance and strength as we do these things. Um, May you continue to remind us that you are with us, that in um, sharing the gospel, Lord, the Holy Spirit is there with us. He will give us the power to do these things, to do your works, your great works, Lord God. Um, Father, um, continue to guide us, remind us of these things, um, and let us guard our hearts, Lord God, um, from the false teachers from the false Christ who um, take your name um, um, as well, Lord God. Father, continue to guide us, lead us in everything, and we continue to give back all praise and glory to you alone, in Jesus' name. Amen. pray. Come to the Lord in prayer.
Father, thank you for today, for this service. Thank you for everything that you give to us um, and the hope and the joy that you give to us in Christ. Lord, we give you this offering to worship you today, to give our whole souls to you, Lord. And um, we pray, Lord, that you would use it for the advancement of your kingdom and for your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 19, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the rules, the rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Praise God. <laughs> Fairer than lilies of rarest 
Po yung, um, we've got um, three Sunday schoolers who will be um, recognized and will move up uh, to the next level class of our Sunday school. So we've got um, um, Kiran, Kiran Lael Salvador Castillon um, for keep completing the nursery class and he will now be in the primary. Um, okay. Okay, and may I call as well Alison Kate Lumahan for completing the primary class and she will be now with the juniors next week. And uh, Gabriel Sky Devera, known as Gabby, for completing the primary class as well and going to juniors. Okay, thank you. And I think um, we are seeing, I, I can see in this uh, group that they will be the incoming worship, worship leader. And I can see in Kiran, the, the, the incoming uh, Kuya Albert or Eric, no? and Gabby and Allison. And I know they are good in singing as well. So may I ask um, Pastor to, to pray for them? And, you know, to, to recon, recognize God's goodness in their lives. Congratulations to the parents and to and the teachers of Sunday School. And let's bring them to the Lord and let's thank the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the accomplishment of these little ones. And we thank you, Lord, for the conviction of the parents and the teachers to lead them at the feet of Jesus. And we thank you for all the learnings, knowing and we acknowledge, O oh Lord, that the principles of your word, of the scriptures, O oh Lord, are the most important ones that we can um, give to them, that we will lead them, O oh Lord, that they may, can make them know that we are going to mold them upon the nature of Jesus, of who he is, and what he has said in the Bible. We thank you, Lord, for their lives. Keep them, keep their family safe. And may we continue to lead them, O Lord. May we give them a good example so that in the future they will be inspired by them so that they will um, be having someone to look up to and revere Christ in their lives. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, 
amen to um, uh, the kids. And um, also thank you, Koya Mark, for the word you have given to us and um, for the second coming. And um, also thank you, LG, for the special number that you've given us. And I hope um, we have all gained something out of today's message as it is rich and full of lessons in our Christian walk. And um, now on to our announcements. So um, firstly, um, we would like to invite you all to the YICM anniversary, which will, I think, be on the 13th, 10th, um, 10th of February. And um, we would like to invite you all to try and um, come there. And um, also, we would like to invite you all to our Sunday devotion, which will um, be at 9.45 in the morning. And then we also have our worship service, which is at 10.30 um, in the morning. And um, if you have any kids, also please um, bring them over for our Sunday school every Sunday, which will be after the worship service. And um, we also always have prayer meetings every Tuesdays, which will be at 9 o'clock at Cambridge, but um, it could also be at 8.30 if you're close to Haverhill. Um, we also have life group every Thursdays at 8 o'clock, and we now have women's coffee club and men's every third Sunday of the month, um, as well as youth meetings every second and fourth Sunday. And finally, we have LG meetings every last week of the month. And um, if you also want to be part of the UCC membership or water baptism or discipleship program, you could always talk to PJP or Pastor Joseph Pinlack or my handsome father, um, <laughs> Brother Alvin Limahan. And um, also, um, once the service is finished, once the food is served, can everyone please refrain from staying at the queuing area to make it less chaotic for the staff there. And um, for our visitors, you can queue or you could go straight to the table, which will be on my right hand side over here, which will be reserved for the visitors and the leaders. And also for our hot drink stations, if you want um, coffee after a long night shift or, um, or some hot chocolate, um, it will also be on my right hand side over there and as well as reading resources which will be at the entrance on my right hand as well and um, now can everyone please um, rise up as we pray for these activities jesus our heavenly father thank you for everything they have done for us today um, thank you for letting everyone here have the time to listen to your word, O oh Lord, and to praise you, Lord. And please can you um, bless all these activities that we're having, O oh Lord. And um, can you bless these activities, O oh Lord. And um, also please guide everyone here um, and let everyone here have um, a blessed rest of their day, O oh Lord. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord says in John 10.10, 10, um, the thief comes, does not come except to, um, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is what Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And praise be to God because that fountain of life is available to everyone who seeks him with all their heart and um, who thirst for, for God to be in their life. Do you alone may my 
As we close in prayer, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this um, celebration of your name. We thank you because you've got a living God in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the worship service. We thank you for our lives and the hope that comes from you. And help us, O oh Lord, to do all the more to be faithful to you as we day, as we did, as we see the day approaching. And help us, O oh Lord, to live out a life of faith that pleases you. Encourage us. And help us to focus on encouraging each other. Building each other up, O oh Lord, for the glory of your name. We thank you, Lord. May we ponder upon our hearts that great day that we are all waiting. And that is the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Encourage us and help us. Um, to leave us the salt and the light of this world so that we can reach out, so that we can focus on the work that you have entrusted to each and every one of us until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the God of peace, who brought, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Can all be seated.